Hey, Pixar fans, how's everyone doing today? Happy Friday. Dan Taylor from DanThePixarFan.com here back once again, and today I'm finally taking a detailed look at the Space Ranger buggy remote-controlled vehicle as part of Mattel's Lightyear 5-inch scale action figure collection. Now, what's interesting is that this vehicle was released under Mattel's Hot Wheels brand. And I'm not totally sure why, since Mattel does release some other remote-controlled toys that aren't Hot Wheels, so it's not like they couldn't have. But maybe the Lightyear team there at Mattel just felt like, since Hot Wheels does have their Hot Wheels RC category already, why not collaborate with them? Maybe they also felt the Hot Wheels logo would be a selling point as well? No idea, just throwing out guesses here, but definitely let me know if you have any insights, since I am curious. But yeah, anyway, I bring that up just so you know not to be thrown off by the Hot Wheels logo. Like I mentioned, this is still part of Mattel's Lightyear 5-inch figure collection and is in scale with the rest of the figures and other vehicles in this line. Also, I know I'm super late with this review, as you might remember from my original Lightyear haul video back in the spring. I got this clear back then, and it was actually one of the very first Lightyear 5-inch scale vehicles released. This one, the base utility vehicle, and the XL-15 ship were the first three vehicles that came out and that I purchased. Time got away from me though, so many other reviews happened between now and then, but I'm so happy to finally be getting around to it now. And by the way, this is the last 5-inch scale Lightyear toy that I needed to review. I've reviewed the entire collection at this point as of this video, which you can find in my Lightyear 5-inch scale figure reviews playlist. And yeah, I'm all caught up now until the next wave of 5-inch stuff releases at least, and now I can finally start reviewing Lightyear toys in other categories like Mattel's large scale figures and hyperspeed series. So that's really it as far as my initial thoughts and documenting the packaging. Everything looks really good in box, but now it's time to take this thing out of the box so we can see just how well it works. What's the fun of an RC vehicle just sitting in the package, right? Yeah, exactly. And here it is, guys. Things are looking really good already. I dig it. And if you couldn't tell, first off, a 5-inch Buzz figure is not included. That's just a cardboard stand-in used as an example of how the 5-inch scale figures can fit inside the buggy. Now to get the vehicle completely out, there is just some tape and a few little plastic twisty doodads that you need to remove on the back and bottom of the cardboard insert here, and the buggy will pop right on out. A quick hassle-free removal, and here's a closer look at the cardboard buzz. And now I just wanted to share a quick look at the instructions in case anyone here needs to reference them for whatever reason. So on the first page it shows the box contents, just two items, the vehicle and remote control. And then upon opening up here, it goes over the features. Very self-explanatory stuff though. And then how to drive. Again, very simple. It's just forward and backwards and steer left and right. Next up, the setup. It's just talking about the battery installation. Um, the buggy does take three AA's and the remote control takes two AA's. Um, not included, by the way. And lastly, pairing the remote and buggy, which is as simple as just switching the vehicle to the on position and things link automatically. Anyway, for such a simple toy, it does seem like there are a lot of instructions, but man, there's really nothing at all to it. And now for my quick 360 degree overview now that the vehicle has been completely removed just so you can see all the details of the sculpt. Nothing fancy honestly, pretty minimal but a good little buggy design. No real paint ops at all as far as weathering, you customizers can fix that though. But we do get some printed details and a few stickers or decals that give it a little something something so it's not just one solid off-white colored plastic vehicle. The steering wheel doesn't turn at all, however the mounted gun on top can rotate 360 degrees, which by the way isn't on the Star Command buggy vehicles seen in the film from what I could tell. Which leads me to my next point, this buggy is only loosely inspired by similar ground vehicles seen in Lightyear driving around the Takani Prime base, um, Buzz even rides in one on his way to his first test mission. Um, as you can see though, it's not an exact match. Design wise, Mattel definitely took some liberties here for the toy version, which includes adding in the gun on top to spice things up for play I imagine. But it's close enough, I guess, and it gets the point across. Anyway, we got some pegs back here so a figure can stand securely and man the gun. And then moving around, pretty identical on this side. Though I am noticing now that the Star Command sticker on the opposite side, the driver's side, was printed backwards. Like, it's just a reverse of the accurately displayed sticker, which is so super odd. I'm not sure if that's a defect on all of these out there or just mine, but oops, on Mattel. <laughs> oh well. The tires are rubber by the way, which is nice, it feels like they'll have a good grip, and they have some solid treads as well. Looking underneath here, you can use this to adjust the steering alignment if the buggy isn't driving straight. Here's the on-off switch, the circle is off, 
So it's off right now, and if it's towards the line, that means it's on. Obviously, here's the battery compartment. I'll go ahead and add those in a second. And I think that covers just about everything, guys. Things are pretty lightweight, yet decently sturdy. I mean, it feels pretty typical for an RC toy like this. And yeah, not a super rugged RC compared to some out there, of course, um, but this definitely can be used outside if you'd like, in different environments and on different terrains. For me personally, though, I'll be keeping this as an indoor toy just to keep things in good condition. I don't want to chew things up too much or get the buggy dirty, at least for now. So sorry, I won't be testing how it performs outdoors. And here's a real brief look at the controller. Very basic stuff, but hey, I like it that way. Simple is sweeter for me most of the time, and I'm glad it actually comes with its own remote so I don't have to link it to my phone or something like that. There is the Hot Wheels RC logo and battery compartment on the back, Star Command logo on the front, we got the forward and backward button there on the left, and the left and right button on the right. And now for what I'm really interested in testing out, let's get some figures in here. Okay, so, so far Buzz on his own fits just fine. A little tight, but it's fine. Mo looks really good on the back there. He fits great. I mean, you can put really any figure standing back there. I'm just going with what the packaging suggests here for now. To me, it does seem like the gun should have been mounted a little bit higher, so it's not so awkwardly close to the figure's shoulders, especially when you get two figures in there. But hey, just a thought. Now the question is though, can I actually fit another figure there in the front passenger seat next to Buzz? Let's check. And the answer is not really, unfortunately. Man, I had a feeling this would be the case. Someone has left a comment before saying that this buggy couldn't actually fit three figures at the same time, like it shows in the box, and I was really hoping that wasn't true, but it pretty much is true, guys. I mean, another figure can kind of squeeze in, as you can see, and I know if I took some time to really cram and finagle things like crazy, I could probably squeeze Izzy next to Buzz, but the point is, it shouldn't be like that. You shouldn't have to work so hard to fit the figures in. I feel like Mattel could have designed this to be really only an inch wider and just that would have probably made all the difference. Maybe an inch and a half, but either way it wouldn't take much at all. I know it's kind of a bummer and I totally get it if this aspect is a deal breaker for you, but for me, if you're a light year 5 inch scale collector of the figures and vehicles, you're still not going to want to miss adding this one into your display and or playtime. It's frustrating, I know, this could have been totally improved, um, but it doesn't ruin it for me since at least two figures can fit relatively comfortably. Meaning one in the front and one in the back of course. All right, so I just got all the batteries installed, and all you have to do to pair things up here is turn the switch to the on position on the buggy itself, wait a couple moments, and then hit any of the control buttons on the remote. You'll notice the red light on the remote will turn on, sometimes it blinks when it's pairing, but when you see the solid red light, that indicates things are paired and you're good to go. So yeah, we're actually good to go right now. We got forward, yep, backwards, good, and then right, and left. Okay, looks like everything is working as it should, so let's see it in action. All right, here we go. Nice, okay. Right on. It's definitely pretty zippy. It's not going to get up to any high speeds, obviously, or anything like that, but things definitely move. It's totally as fast as it needs to be, especially... Oh, <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> especially for younger kids. And of course, I'm working with very limited space here on my table, so I'll take things upstairs in a moment to test things out on the floor. Um, here, I just really wanted to make sure things were connected and that it moves as it should, and it seems to be all good. <laughs> Sorry, I promise I'm not this bad of a driver in real life. Oh, no, dang it. Okay, this better not be broken. Hold, please. Okay, so no worries, we're back and it's all good. I just took things upstairs for a speedy demonstration on the floor as well, just to give you, hopefully, a slightly better idea of how it drives. And I do love it, guys. I just have to practice driving this a bit more and in a bigger space, but I'll get better soon. Now, before wrapping things up, here we have the RC buggy there in the middle next to some other Star Command vehicles, just so you can see a size comparison. We got the crawler vehicle from the Ultimate Star Command base playset on the left and the base utility vehicle on the right. As far as size, this buggy measures about five and a quarter inches wide, roughly eight inches long, and about five and a quarter inches tall to the top of the gun. The description says that this is a 120 scale vehicle for anyone wondering about that, and retail price is $23.99, which is totally fair, I think, and you can still snag it on Amazon or at Target. I'll be putting the links to buy below for anyone interested in purchasing this for their Lightyear collection. To me, despite the tight squeeze for the figures, if you know about that going into getting this, I think this is still a worthy addition to your Lightyear collection. It just could have been a little bit bigger. That's really my only complaint. And yeah, I'd go ahead and grab it while it's still around. It is a lot of fun despite its flaws, and it will bring that much more action during Lightyear playtime. Not to mention it will look great displayed with your Ultimate Star Command base playset if you got that as well. Anyway, I'm mostly curious to hear what you guys have to say down below in the comments, so be sure to hit me up there. As usual, thanks so much for watching everyone, and I will see you all in my next video.